Um, hello, everyone. I am Alicia Dubois, as advertised. Um, I guess technically I'm Lady Alicia Dubois. I am currently the Kingdom Web Minister of Ontier, and I have been a web pro professional. I've been working in the web industry since 1996, when, when the web was young. Um, I currently work with WordPress every day. I work for a company called Automatic, which is the company that brings you WordPress.com and Tumblr and um, lots of other things. Uh, I work for the division called WordPress VIP, which is the enterprise um, business to business version of WordPress. Our customers are pushing the envelope of what WordPress can do every single day. And I love my job. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to talk to you about what uh, creating a portfolio website with WordPress. Um, and we're, we are going to talk about what you can do with the free version of WordPress. This is wordpress.com for the purposes of this. Um, presentation, I have created a sample wordpress.com site that is just very bare bones, but I wanted to take you through the process of setting one up. So I'm going to share my presentation screen and it's going to change my whole view again. There we go. Okay. Can everyone see the presentation? Excellent. Uh, create a portfolio website. Oh, you know what I really like though? I really like it when I have the presenter notes. So hang on here. All right. Um, okay, so we're gonna go through Uh, most of these things. <laughs> um, but we're at least going to get through what you can create with WordPress, what kinds of things you can do with WordPress. Um, and we'll go through the dashboard and what the things on the dashboard do. Um, we'll talk about posts versus pages, what the difference is. And um, and then we'll switch over to a live version and I'll show you what I've created and what, um, and then one I, one I did earlier. Um, so first I wanna talk a little bit about what you can create with WordPress. So um, you, basically speaking, um, and there is more, but, but uh, I didn't, I wanted to keep it simple. Um, you can create a website. A uh, website is just a collection of, of content, like information, words, media, like images, video, audio. Uh, in, in this context, a website is made up of static content, meaning uh, that it doesn't change uh, or it doesn't change very often. Um, another sort of buzzword is that it's evergreen, is that it, it doesn't, it doesn't change very much at all. Um, it's not date sensitive or expected to, it's also not expected to be as current as uh, something like a news post or a an, an, an news article. Um, here's an example of a, a, a website. So this is my consulting website. <laughs> uh, it is, just a collection of, of informational content. So these, these are links up here. Each one takes you to a page that has some content on it. Um, let's see. Readers view one page at a time rather than a list of articles and they access the different pages using the navigation. They don't Ha usually pages don't have dates on them or authors um, allow comments, things like that. 
Um, the next thing you can create is a blog. So um, the first uses of WordPress was, was at, as a blog. Um, a blog is a type of website and it's dynamically generated. So it's, it's generated, it could be diff generated differently every time, but it is um, generated at the time that you make the request uh, and made up of smaller pieces of content. So um, in this example, this is my, my own portfolio site. Um, each of these little cards here is a post. And if you were to click on that, you would get some more information, but you can see that there's a date here and a number of comments, um, which all of them say zero because I haven't really told anybody that this site is ready to be viewed. <laughs> um, it's fairly new. So um, it is, this this page is loaded when you when you come to the site and i can change the order of these if i want to it's it's just made up of smaller pieces of content and they can be displayed in chronological order um, or alphabetical order or um, they can be uh, categorized or tagged, which we'll talk about that later, um, another form of, of categorization. And then the third one we're going to talk about is creating a website with a blog. So you can combine these concepts where you have some pages that are static and some pages that are dynamic. Hello, puppy. Uh, we're going to have puppy interference probably today. Um, this is, I was just plugging our event called Athenaeum, and this is the, the website from last year, actually. <laughs> it's been updated since this picture, but um, the, the homepage here has static information about the event itself, and then if you go to the exhibits page, it shows you more of a view like this one where you can choose which, hey, you are not presenting here. I am presenting. Um, where you can see the different projects that people have posted. And, and actually, there we have a lot of comments and um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of feedback on each of the different projects. And they look, um, they look different to each other, more different to each other than these do. OK, hey. He likes to come in under my mouse hand and like flip my hand up. I do not love this. Um, okay, so that's just a, a sort of quick overview of what we can do with WordPress in, in this context. There, there are so many things that WordPress can do. WordPress actually powers um, just about 40% of all websites on the web. Um, and it is a very versatile, very flexible piece of software. So um, even if you are looking at a website, you know, looking at two different two different websites, they if they're both being powered by WordPress, you probably wouldn't be able to tell. So what is WordPress? Want to back up just a little bit and talk about um, what this software is, because I say this word a lot, but what are we actually talking about? Um, so WordPress was started in 2003, um, and it was started as blogging software. So um, blogs were simple websites back then, and they this is what they needed to do. They needed to display journal entries um, that were called posts. They displayed them in reverse chrono chronological order, um, and they could include text, images, and links. And that was it. So uh, very simple, but it was it was meant for journaling. It was meant for um, 
news updates, little, little updates. Uh, WordPress is a content management system that is Uh, WordPress is a content management system and a content management system is a broad term for this type of software. Um, it basically means that you, users don't have to be programmers in order to build their website. The, the software itself manages the content, which again is text, images, videos, uh, documents like a, a PDF or a Word document that you want people to be able to download, um, music clips, anything that you want to, you would want to put on your website. So the contents of your website. Um, in general, uh, so WordPress is just one of many content management systems. Uh, uh, someone earlier, I can't remember now who, um, said Blogger, they've been using Blogger. Very, that is a content management system, very similar. Um, there are others out there, Joomla, Drupal, um, loads and loads and loads of them. Uh, they, in general, they have some common features. So they generally allow collaborative authoring. Multiple people can edit the content, um, not necessarily at the same time, but I can be working on an article while somebody else is working on an article um, or post. Uh, the content that you put into the content management system is searchable. Uh, and then, weird, my notes don't line up. Cool. Okay. And then uh, you usually have templates of some kind. Templates, uh, WordPress calls them themes, dictate the layout and appearance of that content when it's viewed as a web page. And um, it's very important to remember that the content you're writing or the content you're publishing online is really just a collection of words and, and file names. It is, um, we use, the, the web uses a markup language called HTML, which you've probably all heard of. Um, and a, a markup language is different from a programming language in that it has, um, little bits of text that surround your content to tell the web browser how to, um, how to arrange it on the page. Um, but it, your, what you're writing can be viewed in so many different ways just by changing the font that you're using or the color of the font. Um, you can change the position of elements on a page. Um, and, and none of that has to do with the words that you write. So you don't have to worry about any of that stuff when you are creating your, your portfolio site or when you're creating the content that's going to go on it. It's, it's the most important thing about writing any web page or creating any website is to determine what information you're going to put on there first and, and get that get that sorted out and get that written. Um, I mean, you can write it as you go along as well, but if you start out thinking about what you want it to look like online, you, from personal experience, you will never get started. So write your information first, figure out the purpose of your site. Um, is it to show off the work that you've done as a portfolio? Is it to, um, to showcase classes you can teach. I have a section for that on, on my portfolio website because it's so much easier to say, hey, I could teach a class at this event. Um, here, here's a link, pick a class. I could teach any of these. Or um, uh, here, you know, on, a, on a, a Facebook group or something, you know, here's, here's an example of a piece that I did that used that technique and I wrote about it here. It's, um, it's very important that you figure out what you're gonna write about and what you want to say to your reader about, about that thing. Worry about what it's gonna look like later, believe me. It's, very, it's a very fun rabbit hole, but you will spend hours in there and you will not end up with any content if you don't start with that first. <laughs> and definitely do go back and watch my my class about um, writing for the web because 
it is, um, well, I mean, I think it's useful, but also other people have said that it's it's very useful. Okay, do we have any questions so far? I want I do want you to interrupt me with questions, especially because time is short. So if you I, do, I have, do have a minor, sorry. Yes, yes, go ahead. I have a minor comment. Um, when you guys are talking or thinking about your themes, it's very important to look at the overall layout of them because they're gonna dictate the entire um, website's look and feel. Yes. And there's a lot of free ones out there. Sorry. Yeah. No, that's that's good, that's good. Um, and the what we're gonna talk about today is specifically what you can find at wordpress.com. And you'll see in a minute that they, they do limit your choices. If you want to pay for an account at wordpress.com, you can upload your own themes and then that gets into a whole another realm of of trying to find there are thousands and thousands of of themes so um in a way i think it's good especially when you're starting out to have more limited choices but it's um you still get a lot of a lot of leeway around what things look like and if you're if you're starting out don't don't think about buying a theme um, some of the more paid themes are highly or can be highly technical um, shameless plug, the Kingdom of Vadenbelt's whole web platform that we're upgrading to is the same theme, but all of our um, Kingdom sites and our Bernal sites look drastically different because we have paid for a theme called Divi, which is super powerful and has a lot of options. So consider for a beginning out blog um, a simpler theme because it's going to save you a lot of time and headache. Yeah, that's true. Um, okay, so this is the... WordPress mission, and I, I wanted to just uh, touch on this for a minute because I want you to understand that we are going to talk about free options. And so WordPress is a little confusing because there are multiple types of WordPress, um, I guess, multiple flavors of WordPress. There is uh, free WordPress, which is at wordpress.org. Um, that is the um, uh, WordPress foundation, I think it's called. And that is open source software. It will always be open so source software. The creators of it have, have purposefully done that because they want to, uh, the, the term they use is democratize publishing, which, to me, which means to be able to make that available to everyone for free forever um, so that your voice can be heard on the web. Um, WordPress.com is a commercial model that uses the free software and provides you um, hosting space for that, so a home for it on, on the web. And uh, it does limit your options, so it's easier to manage for beginners. And um, it is it is a commercial model, although there is the free option there, and we'll see that. Um, you can, uh, and then there's like the division that I work for is um, large business WordPress, and again, they are not paying for the WordPress software; they're paying for the services that go with it. So it's a, a hosting space and consulting services. So I just wanted to let you know that WordPress is free and it there will always be free WordPress that is um, written into the foundations, I don't know, founding documents or, or whatever. Okay, account creation and setup. So this next section um, actually takes you step-by-step step with screenshots through creating a, an account at wordpress.com. And I don't, I think that we should not go through this part here right now. Like I'm going to click through these really quickly um, because you can follow these later, but you would basically, you basically will go to wordpress.com and sign up for an account if you don't have one already. Um, so I signed up for a new account. That's how I got all these screenshots. And, uh, you know, you create a site. It asks you what you want to call it. Um, don't worry, you can change it later. <laughs> 
Uh, you choose a domain, so you just want to make sure that you, uh, like WordPress will try to suggest available names based on what you named your site. So you can hit go back here and change the name if you don't come up with a nice, look, look what it wanted to choose by default, like this, my portfolio, lots of numbers, and it says it's free here. Yeah, no, like I chose this one, obviously, but I went back and forth to, um, change the name of the site here uh, until I got a free domain that looked like someone would actually remember it. Um, you want to make this memorable and you, and you want to make sure that these words, when they're all put together, don't, um, like, please don't make it sound terrible. Like the number of, of websites that I've seen that are supposed to be professional commercial websites that it ends up saying like something provocative or something like you always want to pronounce that middle word as balls or something like it's careful where the word breaks are when it when it's all put together that's that's all I'll say about that um, <laughs> And you, you do want it to be sort of easy for people to remember, even if it's long. My own site is 14th century Renaissance woman because I um, am, my primary persona is 14th century, uh, but I also uh, have a persona that is later uh, in the, during the Renaissance. And so it's kind of a, a play on that. And it's long, but they are words, it's a phrase that we can remember, so. As long as it's memorable, you're good. The next thing you do is choose a design and there are lots of designs uh, here. I chose one called Edison because I thought it looked like a good choice for a blog, but there are different, uh, different types of designs lend themselves better to different types of content. So this one here is called, what is it called? Couture or something um, looks like a great uh, photography type of site. If you have some really nice photos and you want those photos to be large, front and center, uh, this one they've they've already sort of given you a clue that it looks like it could be a great community site. You can always change this. This is this is easy to change. So choose one. I chose one called Edison, which looks like this. Then the next step is to pick a font. Um, they give you very limited choices. You can change this as well, but the fonts are the letter shapes, um, just in case. And I'm a calligrapher. In calligraphy, we call them hands. <laughs> Although sometimes people call them fonts anyway. Um, and they'll give you some combinations to, to choose from. The first one will be for headings. The second one will be for the, the body text. Um, I chose cabin railway because I liked it, but again, you can change this later. Um, okay, this is the important part. The next, next step is choose a plan and you have to scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page and select this zero dollars option. These prices are um, per month. So you want the zero dollars. And and again, like even if you decide later that you do want to upgrade or you know want some of the features of the other uh, plans, start out with the free one. Make sure that you're actually gonna use this and and that you're that this is not enough. Like I this should be enough for most portfolio sites. Start at zero. You probably want to stay there. Okay, um, tour of the dashboard. So um, when you first come to your to your page, it will or to your site, it will look like this. This is the WordPress dashboard. This is your your home base for uh, doing everything that you want to do with your site. Um, it has a bunch of options. My home will get you back to this this dashboard page. Stats will show you which posts and pages are being viewed most often, how much traffic you're getting. Upgrades, obviously, allows you to upgrade your features. Oop. 
Sorry, I went backwards. Okay. Um, posts, underneath posts, you have categories and tags. We're gonna talk about posts versus pages and categories versus tags in just a minute. Media is where all of your, so these are content, sorry, posts and pages are both where you're gonna put content. Uh, media is where you're gonna put any images, video, audio, PDFs, Word documents, whatever. Um, comments is where you'll manage comments that come in on your posts. You can delete them, approve them, respond to them, things like that. Feedback is where you can tell WordPress how you really feel. Uh, and no, I won't be able to read it. WordPress.com is a different division. It would, can I, I have a quick, quick, quick question? Yes. Um, it was mentioned in a, another class yesterday that WordPress has a limit on how much media it can store under a free account. Do yes. You, do you have any suggestions for a, a better way to, to host media in WordPress or to connect to a different like, is it better to connect it to an external link of a Google album or something so that the uh, WordPress page isn't bogged Get around by, by media? Uh, so you can, uh, you could do that. Um, that is a way around that. The, um, the other thing to do is to make sure that the images you're using are optimized for the web, that they are made uh, that the file sizes aren't too big because we don't, um, and there's there's a whole, in fact, I think there was a class this weekend about that, um, about optimizing your images for, for the web. It was Our, the screens on computers don't need as much resolution, like they, they don't uh, need a really large file to make a an image look great to our eyes. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So, um, you're, you'll definitely want to manage your image sizes to optimize space. That's true. And I, I don't remember right now. That was on the that options. You know, choose a plan page. Uh, the the limits of how much media you can upload. But yeah, you could link to a, a like a Google photo album or Flickr account or um, uh, something like that. If you have albums there, um, that's that's another solution. But definitely look into image optimization anyway. Um, OK, I want to talk about pages and posts because it's kind of important. Um, they look very similar, but they have they have unique functions. So um, a post is dynamic. It can be used and shown in many different ways. It can be on a, a page with other posts. It can be shared on social media, things like that. Uh, a page is static. So once you make it, the page stays in one spot unless you change it. And um, things that are unique to pages. Uh, they're not listed by date. They don't have tags or categories. Uh, sorry, pages do have, no, no, pages don't have categories. Um, tags. No, no, posts have tags. Um, posts, uh, posts have categories and tags. Uh, pages don't have don't have that kind of information. They can be um, they can be nested, so they can use parent-child hierarchies. You can have, for example, a, an upper level or a, a top level page that is um, uh, calligraphy, and then you can have a child page that is um, gothic calligraphy, but that's not a that's not a categorization. It's just a sub page. Um, so some you can you can add um, pages to menus and some themes show pages in the top in the in the tabs at the top of the blog. So um, you might have like a contact us page or an about page or the home page. Um, 
posts are a bit different. You can find posts in archives. So um, show me all the posts that were written in August of 2020. <clears throat> Um, they can use categories. You can have a post, uh, a group of posts that are um, in the calligraphy category, which is how I arrange mine. You can use tags as well. Tags at our, um, we discussed this yesterday in, in talking about writing for the web. Tags are keywords. <clears throat> um, they're, they could be seen as categories in a way. But um, when you're structuring these things, you want to have your categories be broad buckets of that you'll put information into, <clears throat> um, but that that information really fits well in one category. You don't want, ideally, you don't want a post to be in more than one category. It can be, but it, that can make things confusing for the reader when, when they come to view the content. Um, tags are a way to add keywords to a post that can group them together in a different way. So you want your post to have lots of keywords in one category. Uh, categories and tags are both taxonomies, uh, a taxonomies mechanism for grouping, grouping items, a system of categorization. So um, I'm going to skip through that. All right, categories versus tags. So uh, categories sort and group posts into different sections. They're predefined and broad. Uh, they are descriptive and they can have subcategories. So you could have um, a category of books and then a subcategory with different subcategories with different genres. Uh, and then below that you could have, you know, the, uh, let's see, the, the romance section could have a, a subsection called historical romance and uh, some other kind of romance. Um, but <clears throat> you, you want to think about those like you would an outline. So you want to, you want to plan those out. Uh, posts, uh, sorry, um, tags ha are, are much more free form. They're based on keywords. They're not hierarchical, so you won't have tags and then subtags, like you will categories. Um, they can be used to form different groupings. You can have lots of them on one post. Um, let's see. Yeah, they can be used in sort of an ad hoc way without causing confusion categories. Um, if you use more than one category per uh, per post, you can you can kind of confuse your your reader. Okay, so those are some resources that will be included in the thing. And let's um, let's switch over to the site. So here's the site that I created, um, and you can view it. Here's what it looks like. I haven't, I haven't changed anything about it, uh, but you can see this is the, my latest post section, and they are all uncategorized, and they're in reverse chronological order. Uh, in the interest of time, I think I'm actually just going to flip over to my. Here's one I did earlier. Here's my uh, my personal portfolio. So you can see if you click on any one of these, you get the page that shows you the write-up about my project. There I am working on the project. Um, and I, I chose not to go into a whole lot of detail about each of these projects, but um, you're 
it's up to you how much you want to write. Um, <clears throat> this particular theme has a large image at the top. Um, and then the, the behind the scenes, so here's, here's the dashboard page of my, um, of my WordPress blog. And I have the same, the same options here, similar options here. I'm not using wordpress.com to host this one. So I have some, some different options along the side. Um, I wanted to talk about themes too, but I'm looking at the time and wondering if maybe we should about five see if there, more minutes. Yeah, um, I'm wondering if we should just see if there are questions, anything you want me to go into specifically from here. Um, have you I've seen one? Have you seen a good collection of SCA blogs that show different ways of uh, highlighting different, different information? I know um, the Complete Anachronist has more like articles rather than photos. Uh, Mor uh, Morgana, Mordana, Morgan, um, Morgan Donner has yes. one that highlights photos and videos more than article content. Have you seen it? Do you have a good collection of uh, SCA specific blogs to show how things can be organized and highlighted differently? I don't, um, although that would be really neat to curate. Uh, so here is Morgan Donner's site. She's a friend of mine. I actually host this site for her. <laughs> um, and she she mostly does things on YouTube and Instagram these days. So her site is basically her YouTube feed, her um, Instagram feed, which doesn't seem to be working right properly right now. And that would be my fault. And then she has some older content that um, are blog pro posts here. So these are more kind of archived because she isn't blogging as much anymore. She's mainly just doing YouTube content. Um, but that's a really, that's a really good, that would be a really great thing to see um, is like a curated list. I'm writing this down. Um, so you mean just showing different ways to different, different types of portfolio sites? 